if you only had enough space to download one production mod for Farming Simulator 22, it's got to be this one. How's it going, everybody? Driver53 here, and today I want to show you the only factory that you are going to need if you're running productions here for Farming Simulator 22. What I've got is the Farm Factory. Now, this is a brand new mod released by Omatana on June 12th, 2023. And it's not just one factory. You've got two buildings, but we're going to focus primarily on this one right here to start with. Once you have the mod downloaded, you come down here to your construction, then you're going to go across to productions. You're going to go down to factories, and then you're going to go across to where all your factories are located at, your mod ones. You're going to come across here to farm factory. Now, as you can see over there on the right hand side, you're going to be able to put a lot of different things into this facility and get a lot of different things out of it. So it's going to go right here. It's going to be $50,000 if you don't need any terraforming at all. It is going to be able to be put anywhere around here. So I've got the snap turned on, or I can do this right here, and it's not going to snap. The one point of interest is here in the front. This is where you're actually going to drop off all of your products and pick up all of your pallets. You get into the menu, come up here to this wrench, and then hit L3. You're going to come up to the production chain menu. As you can see, tons of stuff that you're going to be able to make here. Wheat flour, barley flour, all your different flours, even corn flour here, breads, cakes, sugar beet, um, sugar. You're going to be able to make raisins, grape juice, sunflower oil, canola oil, olive oil, cereal, butter, cheese, all your different types of fabrics. You're going to be able to make clothes. Now, two additional recipes here, and this one are French fries and premium potatoes. Another really interesting thing about a lot of these different ones is I don't know if you can see right here, you got pig food. Yes. 30 pig food per cycle. You're going to be able to get out of the um, recipes that call for potatoes. And if you come up here farther, you can see even with cheese, you're going to be able to get pig food. Butter, same thing. Cereal, you're not. A lot of your oils you are, though. Your grape juice, um, your sugar beet sugar, your flour or your bread, you're going to be able to get a little bit of pig food out of that as well. Even your corn flour. So if you've got a lot of pigs on your farm, but you don't really want to have to get all the root crops and everything like that. I'm going to get pig food just by doing this right here. Once again, it's going to be pretty simple. All you got to do is drop off your products right here. They're going to go into your storage. You've got tons of storage here in this thing. We come across here to the right-hand side. You can see that you're going to be able to store a lot of product here in this facility. 100,000 liters of most of your grains. Corn is 200,000. Um, once you get down to your flour, it's going to hold 200,000 liters for you again to be able to make your cakes and your bread. Um, and that way also, as you're making your wheat, barley, oats, sorghum, and corn flour, it's got a place to be stored at. That's a really, really important thing here. You want to make sure that down here on this bottom portion, you've got this set on spawn. If you want to keep it within the facility. Now, if you turn this on to selling, it's going to sell everything that's in it here at the top of the hour, every single hour when it hits zero, zero on the clock, it's going to sell however much you have stored up in here. Now, if you happen to have another facility that you want to send this to for whatever reason, instead of using this one, go to distributing. That's going to take it out of this facility, distribute it over to the other one, but it is going to charge you. And depending on how close or how far away that facility is, it's going to cost you more the farther away it is. And 50,000 liters may seem like a lot of storage, but on some of these, it's going to go really, really fast and it's going to fill up. I've got a future video I'm going to be putting out on a little bit of a storage hack that you're going to be able to use with this and one of the other mods that's available on the mod hub. Now, there is another part of this mod that I think is like even better than this one factory right here. All right. This might be the one factory to rule them all. You're going to understand here in a minute why I say that. And that is going to be your farm supply factory, not your farm factory, but your farm supply factory. Now, this is going to make a lot of other things for you. I'm going to go ahead and put it right here. Once again, $50,000 to put it down. And the important parts on this one, again, are right up here in the front. This is where you're going to put all of your product in at, and this is where you're going to get it out. No pallets here. It's all coming out of like an auger that's going to go into a trailer. To access the menu, once again, come up here to the wrench, hit L3, and then you can see here we are on the farm supply factory. Now, the first thing you see here is grass hay. Yes, this is going to take your grass and turn it into hay. It's a fermenter for you. So you don't need Omatana's fermenting silo anymore. You can do it right here. Also, TMR, it's going to automatically mix TMR for you. Now, you could do the traditional recipe right here of having hay, silage, and straw, or you could just use hay and silage. No straw needed at all. Or if you want to be a purist and you want that mineral feed, we made that one here for you too. 
And if you are a purist and you want to make your own mineral feed, you've got a couple different recipes here. First one is lime and soybeans. The second one is stones and soybeans. So you could you could take all those stones out of your fields that you're plowing up, bring it over here, put a little bit of soybean in it, have your own mineral feed, and then you go right here to this recipe, and boom, you're good to go. Now, I mentioned earlier that you're going to be able to make your own hay. What about silage? Grass silage, folks. 3,000 in, 3,000 out. You could do the same thing with hay. I don't know why you'd want to do it with hay instead of silage, unless maybe you get some hay bales from a contract. Ooh, that's a really good idea. Chaff, same thing. Straw, yep, you could turn straw straight into silage. Now, if you're a big fan of natural fertilizers, you can make a digestate right here out of grass and water. It's going to give you silage and digestate, or you use chaff and water, and it's going to give you the same thing. So a great way to be able to get a little bit of silage for your feed and then some digestate so you can actually fertilize your fields without having to make any fertilizer. And if you want to be self-sufficient and not have to buy any seeds from the store, well, here you go. Wheat, barley, or corn, you can use any of those products right here to make your own seeds. Now, one thing that I know for sure is corn is a lot higher yield than wheat and barley. So corn is going to be the way to go if you want to make your own seeds. It's a lot higher yield per hectare, so it's going to go a lot farther whenever you're trying to reseed. You got a lot of lime that you need to put down on your fields, but you don't want to go up to the store and spend all that money on it. Well, right here, make your own. Take all the stones, add a little bit of water. You're going to be able to get your own lime. So let's say you decided that you wanted to make a little bit of that digestate, but now you don't really want to have to get a spreader for it. You'd much rather use a liquid fertilizer. Well, you could do that right here. 3,000 digestate in, 300 liquid fertilizer out. And if you're not a big fan of liquid fertilizer and you'd like to use something a little bit different like the BAM system from Solar Guy Modding, well, solid fertilizer right here, add a digestate. Take your digestate, add a little bit of lime, and you're going to get 300 liters of solid fertilizer. And the last group of recipes here are really awesome because it's going to be able to make pig food for you. I don't know about you guys. I hate having to go over to the uh, pig house of trees and put in just a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit of that. I need a pig food mixer for sure. Omatana has a really, really good one, but I'm so glad she put this one in it right here. As you can see, the first recipe is using corn, barley, canola, and sugar beets. Second is going to be uh, sorghum instead of your corn. Then the third one, you put in potatoes instead of sugar beets, but you're going to have a little bit of soy in this one as well. So one of the few recipes that you actually get to use soy for, but you're still going to need some potatoes. And every once in a while, a farmer needs to buy just a little bit of product to hold them over until their harvest is ready. And that's where another really awesome part of this mod comes in. You're going to go to construction here. Then what you need to do is go over to containers. And then all the way across to the right, you can see the farm supply buying station. You guys are probably used to this from a couple other mods that you can put on your farm to be able to buy directly out of this silo at a little bit of a premium price. So you're going to put it down right here. I'm going to go ahead and rotate it around. So it's going to go straight into my trailer. One really cool thing. I can hit triangle and now there's no longer a collision. So I'm just going to put it down right here. I'm going to hop in it to my truck right here and let's see what all we can buy. Well, you can buy all your wheat, your barley, your oat, canola, sorghum, sunflowers, soybeans, corn, potatoes. Hey, you don't want to grow them. Just and buy them sugar beets same thing seeds i mean if you don't want to put them over there in the or if you don't want to make them over there in the uh, factory you can get it here too same thing with tmr silage grass solid fertilizer lime pig food straw mineral feed hay manure now i'm sure that you're gonna be able to get some of the other liquid items out of here also just this trailer is set up as a dry goods trailer so i'm pretty sure that you're gonna be able to get those out of here as well and some of these items you're not going to be able to sell anywhere on the map because those sale points don't exist. Well, she gave you a couple of those also. You've got a regular one that you could put kind of in front of anything else that you want to make it look like it's a sell point. Or you can get a little uh, market area right here. And to find those in construction mode, what you need to do is go over to production and then go to selling points and go all the way over to the right. You can see the first one right here, just the general basic one is $100. And then your market area one is going to be $500. So you're going to make your money back quick on these. And one thing I didn't mention a while ago was all the storage capacity in this building right here. So we're going to go up here to the menu, come across over here to the right. And as you can see, most of these have like a 5 million liter capacity, uh, except for digestate. 50 million liters. I don't know who in the world ever makes that much digestate. Holy cow, that is definitely going to fertilize your fields very, very well. But some of these are also half million liters, but I think for what you're making, 
Um, that's very, very reasonable. Um, I, I don't think you're ever going to need 500,000 liters of liquid fertilizer, even in like 100 years of playing the game. What do you guys think? Is this the one factory to rule them all? Or, or two? Let me know down in the comments below if you're going to use this one or how it could be improved. After a thorough investigation, we finally solved the mystery of contracts not being able to be completed in Farming Simulator 22. How's it going, everybody? Driver53 here, and yes, we have finally figured out why you cannot complete some of your contracts here whenever you're doing harvesting ones. What I've got right here is a harvesting contract for sunflowers on field number 72 here in Elm Creek. And here you can see that it's fertilized pretty well all the way. It doesn't need anything done to it at all. So if I come out here, you can see that it's at 98% yield bonus. So this is just about as good as you can get of a field. Only 2% more yield you're going to be able to get out of this. So this field should be able to give us enough crop to be able to complete any contract, right? I mean, any contract. The equipment we're using today is the Lizard Colossus by Chris S. and Riley S. And then we're going to be using this Olimac Drago GT header right here. And the reason for this is because it's a mulching header. Now, I was contacted by Jacob, one of our community members and a moderator for me over on my streams. And he gave me a little tip and said, hey, man, you might want to test this out because we've seen issues with it. And I think your people are going to want to know about this. So the theory here is that the mulching of this, the mulching header, actually prevents the harvesting from being registered that it's completed. So we're going to go ahead and try that out here today and see exactly how this works all plays out. So the first thing I want to go over is on this header and other similar headers like it, you're going to have a work mode for the, the mulching portion of it. So you can see now in the top left-hand corner, it says stalk choppers activated. All right. If I press R1 and then L3, I can toggle the work mode. So now they're deactivated or now they are activated. I'm going to go ahead and leave them activated right now. I want to go ahead and run this little bit of a test and see see exactly what's going to happen. Because as soon as I start harvesting, I should start seeing that my percentage of my contract is being completed all the way up to 80%. At 80%, the contract, um, the field is fully harvested, and then you can take and deliver all your product. So if I don't see that moving up to 80%, then I know that there's something going on with the mulching status here. So we're going to go ahead and fire this bad boy up. And we're going to go ahead and get started. So I'm just going to go ahead and make just a little bit of a move or a pass here. Now, that is really cool. Now, this absolutely is a mulching. You guys can see it even mulched the grass. I don't know if you guys can see that back there here. Let me scoot over a little bit right here. You can see that we are actually mulching the grass as well. You can see those flowers are getting cut down. The grass is getting cut down. Man, this thing is just mulching everything in its path. So... I've got, I mean, not even 1%. Let me do a little bit more here, and then I'm going to come back, and we're going to check the status of our contract. Here we are about halfway done with the field. Let's go and take a look at our map. You can see that the bottom portion here is mulched. Now let's go take a look at our contract status. So if I come all the way down here, you can see that we are at 0% complete. That's going to be a problem. Um, if it's not at least to 80% whenever you try and deliver your crop, you're, you're not going to get it. You're not going to be able to complete. So let me just show you that. Let's go ahead and finish this field off. And then I'll take the grain over to the farmer's market where it needs to go. And then um, I'll show you guys exactly what's going to happen if that, if that hasn't moved. I've made my way over to the delivery point for the contract. Let me go ahead and show you the map here. As you can see, the entire thing is harvested and it is mulched. The entire thing completely mulched. That means that this contract should be... 80% done now, but let's go ahead and take a look here at our contract status. And as you can see, it is still 0%. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and put the pipe out here on the harvester. Back up a little bit so that the grain will go in here. And then you guys are going to see that this thing is going to um, say it's complete. And then it's actually going to pay me. I got $1,347 and it's 100% transported for field number 72. So let's go in here and look at this and it's only 20% now. That means that this is true. If you use a mulching header, you're not going to get the 80% complete that you need and you're only going to get the 20% for delivering the goods. It's not going to be complete. I cannot complete this contract at all. The only thing I could do to it is cancel it. So that means don't use a mulching header on your contracts or if you do, make sure you turn off the mulching function. 
on this one right here, all you need to do is hold down your R1 and toggle your work mode over to where it says stalk choppers deactivated. You do that by pressing L1. Then you can do your contract. It's going to be fine. I already tested this out and it's going to complete the contract. No problem for you at all. And then come back over here to activated whenever you're getting on your own farm. If you want to mulch to save some time, that's the way you need to do this. All right. It's not a bad header. It's not. Don't think that I'm um, trying to give the Drago header a bad name here. I'm not. It's just the molting function itself. Make sure you turn that off whenever you're doing corn contracts or sunflower contracts. Console players, are you tired of putting your grass bales in here and not being able to get them out once they're fermented? Well, in today's video, we're going to take a look at 10 fermenting silos or productions, and maybe, maybe you're going to find your new favorite way to make silage. How's it going, everybody? Driver53 here, and today we are going to be taking a look at multiple different uh, fermenting silos and production facilities that you could ferment your grass into silage. Yes, we are very, very focused on silage now because we figured out in the last video that the uh, uh, storage buildings, they don't really work all the time whenever you're using grass. So what I've got here are 10 different ones. They are the grass drying, the American fermenting silos. We've got the drying fermenter, farm factory, American silos pack, silage factory, fermenting silo pack, field products factory, custom fermenting silo, and the multi fermenter. All of these are available on mod hub for all platforms. So Console, PC, doesn't matter. You're all going to be able to use these right here. Now, obviously, there are some other ones on PC that are even more insane than what we've got here. But I'm going to run through the list here and show you guys, based on the volume produced per month, which one I feel is the best here on this list. I'm going to start things off here by showing you a chart that I put together. In the first column, you got the name of the mod. The second column here is the cost of silo or production if you don't have to do any other landscaping. The third column, capacity for inputs and outputs. So most of these are exactly the same. There is one of them on here, though, that you can actually store more input than you can output. The fourth column, volume produced per month. This is the column that I'm going to focus on because when you're trying to make a lot of silage, you want to be able to produce it really fast. You don't want to have to wait around for months and months and months. The fifth column here is a very important one to me because it is the accept bales column, and that means... Yes or no. Either you're going to be able to put bales into it or you're not. Now, we don't always wrap all of our bales. And sometimes when I'm cutting grass, I just want to make a bale and then come back and pick it up with an autoload trailer. And then I want to put it somewhere. Well, I was wrapping them and then storing them in my storage facility. But that didn't work when I was on the PlayStation 5. So now we're going to put them into one of these fermenting silos. And I need one that will actually accept bales. Otherwise... I've got to do this with a loading wagon and I can't actually make the bales and it's going to be a lot more trips. Even though we do have some good ones that hold a lot of material, I still like bales. The last column here is going to be multiple recipes at full production. What I mean by this is if I one, run one recipe and it makes 10,000 liters over a given amount of time, if I turn on two recipes, I want it to be able to make 20,000 liters over that same amount of time total. I don't want it to cut in half, right? So we're looking at which ones of these you could run Every recipe at full production, those are the ones that we are going to focus on a lot because the more recipes you could run, the more efficient your farm is going to run. So the first mod here is going to be grass drying. Cost of this production is going to be $100,000. Capacity is going to be a million liters. So you can put a lot of stuff in here, but I mean, that actually fills up pretty fast because I mean, you can get a lot of grass off a field very, very quickly when you're making bales. Now volume produced per month, only 48,000. It is the lowest here on the list. It also does not accept bales and it doesn't run multiple recipes. So this does um, silage and hay. You can run both of these at the same time, but if you do, production is cut in half. So I honestly do not recommend this one if you're trying to make a lot of silage really quick. The next on the list are going to be the American fermenting silos. Now we have a small, medium, and a large, and you can see that they range anywhere from $60,000 up to $135,000 to place down. Your capacity for inputs and outputs is anywhere from 480,000 liters all the way up to 840,000 liters. I see what they did there. The volume produced each month, all three of these, doesn't matter the size, it's going to be 60,000 liters. Does not accept bales but it does allow for multiple recipes to be run at full production. So that could be a bonus. Maybe you don't have a lot and you need to take a full year to get it done. Well, yeah, this one's a good one for you. 
Next up is going to be the drying fermenter. This one costs $187,000 to put down. Now, your input capacity is 430,000 liters, but your output capacity is only 360,000 liters. So keep that in mind. Volume produced per month, only 67,200. It does not accept bales, but it does run multiple recipes. The fourth mod here on the list is going to be the American Silos Pack. Now, you have a small stave, a large stave, a steel small, and a large small. Now, these look very, very close to those right there, but those are the fermenting silo pack. You can tell because it's got a building next to it. These right here, the American Silos Pack, do not have the buildings. Now, they range anywhere from $50,000 all the way up to $125,000 to place down. Your capacity is anywhere from 250,000 all the way up to 750,000 liters. Volume produced per month. These do have a range. We got 60,000 liters for the first one. Your large save is 120, back down to 96 for your steel small, and all the way back up to 144,000 for your steel large. That's pretty good. They also do accept bales. These are the first ones that you can actually put bales into. That's exciting. Uh, but you cannot run multiple recipes at full production. Uh, you're only going to be able to run one recipe. If you run more than one, you need more than one silo. Up next is your silage factory. Now, this one only costs $75,000 to put down. Your capacity is 400,000 liters. That is insane. Volume produced per month, hey, 240,000 liters. It does take bales, and you can run multiple recipes at full production. This one? This one might just be the top one. Making our way down the list, then we come to the fermenting silo pack. You have a small stave, a large stave, steel silo one, and steel silo two. They range anywhere from $60,000 all the way up to $250,000 to place down on your farm. Capacity, though, is anywhere from $358,000 all the way up to $925,000 liters. Volume produced per month is between $180,000 all the way up to 600,000 liters per month. That is the largest amount that we have had so far. Yes, it does take bales, but no, you cannot run multiple recipes at full production. So I would run only one thing in these again, or place down multiple. The Farm Factory. This one is the next on the list. And we have talked about this one before. And I even said that this might be the one production that you could replace all your other production mods with. But I'm not so sure anymore, guys. 50,000 liters to put down. Its capacity is 5 million liters. Volume produced per month, 720,000 liters. It does take bales, and you can run multiple recipes. This one, it's it might get back up to the top and stay there. Now, the Field Products Factory, we've looked at it also for making your TMR, and it's also great for making just silage. It is large and that's for a very, very good reason. Now, it only costs $100,000 to place down on your farm. Your capacity is 1.65 million liters. Your volume produced per, per month is almost 1.3 million. Now, it doesn't take bales, but you can run multiple recipes at the same time. So, you can make hay in this. You can make silage in this. You get some straw. You can make your TMR all at the same time. And it's not going to slow down. Now that, that sounds like a winner. Coming in at the cheapest mod to put down on your farm is the Custom Fermenting Silo. Only $10,000 to place this down on your farm. Don't let that price fool you, though. Your capacity for your inputs and outputs, 800,000 liters. Yes, the silo right here on the side holds 800,000 liters of product. And your volume produced per month, are you ready for this? 4.8 million. Yes, million. 4.8 million. That is over three times the amount, almost four times the amount of the field products factory. Guys, this one, it might, might knock the farm factory off the top spot. But I don't think we should put it there so fast because it does not accept bales, but it does allow multiple recipes to be run at full production. Now, last but not least, the multi-fermenter coming in with a cost of $120,000 to put down on your farm. Capacity for your inputs and outputs? Yep. 10 million. 10 million liters, guys. That is twice of any other mod here. The Farm Factory, 5 million. This one, 10. That is insane. If you like making silage, 
This one is the one that you want to hold all of your materials and also the volume produced per month. Guys, 8.64 million. Yes, 8.64 million liters per month. Try harvesting all of that in one day. Now, there are a couple bad sides to this. It does not accept bales, and you cannot run multiple recipes at full production. But I think even at half production, you're still almost keeping up with the other one, the custom fermenting silo. I mean, seriously, this multi-fermenter at half rate is still 4.3 million, and your custom fermenting silo is 4.8. You can't make that thing any faster. This one, absolutely. 8.6 million. Now, another thing I wanted to go over really quick is where to find these in build mode. So you're going to come down here into construction, and then under your buildings, you can find some of these under silos. You go all the way across to the right. You can see that there are a few of these here, the American fermenting silos. You've also got the uh, fermenting silo pack. Those are the ones that are going to be here. Everything else is going to be under production, and then your factories. All right, we're all the way over here to the right. Now you've got the silage factory, multi-fermenter, uh, field products factory, grass dryer, drying fermenter, farm factory. Now this is the other one right here, the farm factory um, that does all of your other stuff. This one is a great mod too. I'm going to go ahead and give this one a shout out. I got a link video up above. Check it out. It's awesome. So we're going to keep going across here, the custom fermenting silo. Um, but this little guy right here, okay, the bale chipper. I was going to save this, but I'm going to go ahead and show you guys. For $50,000, you could put down this little bitty structure right here, all right? And um, it, it's going to chip up your bales for you. That way, you don't have to have a facility over there that accepts bales. This right here can do it for you. So all you're going to have to do is put your bales in right here. It's going to chop them up. You pick them back up, and then you deliver it over there with your bulk trailer as a, a bulk grass, and, and you're good to go, right? So for $50,000, you could make that multi-fermenter work for you, right? Because it doesn't accept bales or the custom fermenting silo, or the field products factory. The top three in the volume produced per month do not accept bales. So use this little guy right here, $50,000. I mean, you're going to make that back literally in minutes. Oh, hey, and by the way, this thing holds 10 million liters of product for you. Now that's each crop type, okay? Each crop type, not total, 10 million liters. So you could actually use this as just a really nice silo in and of itself. Well, guys, that's all of them. And I'm not going to list which one I think is the best or my favorite because I think it all depends on what type of farm you're running. So there's all the data. Use it as you want. If you've got another one that I didn't put on the list, let me know down in the comments below because these are really awesome. And I like being able to do this so we don't have to mess with those pace game uh, buildings, the, the storage things. They make me so angry. Seriously, I don't understand why we got something to base game. That doesn't work for all the bale types. All right, so a lot of you guys have been asking me on some other videos, how in the world can you auto unload into one of these storage buildings right here? Well, unfortunately, there is no way to do it, but I did find a workaround. How's it going, everybody? Driver 53 here, and today I'm gonna show you how you can take all of your products on your auto load, and you're gonna be able to put them into one of these storage buildings right here. Now, I've got just the base game storage building here the Giants gave us in the base game. And I'm using an 82 Studios TLX Phoenix right here with the auto load on the back. Now, I've only got like 34,000 liters in here. It doesn't matter. You can get the high capacity one here if you want to. 500,000 liters, by the way, you can get here on this. But you want to take and you want to store everything in one of these buildings. I get it. I mean, you could just leave it on here. It's 500,000 liters. It's, it's, it's 500 pallets, right? But if you want to put it in here, there is kind of a way. Now, this is a workaround. It doesn't directly unload it in there. You're going to need one mod real quick. And that's going to be the additional pallet storage by GH66 mods. This originally came out in February 13th of 2023. And I didn't really use it a whole lot whenever it first came out because it was very, very specific to certain productions that I wasn't really using at the time. But now that we've got these production buildings after that, yeah, there's there's definitely a way we can make this work. It's a, it's a process. So bear with me. What you need to do is come down here into construction. Then you're going to go over to your silo extensions. Once you get this mod downloaded, you're then going to come across until you see right here, additional pallet storage. 
Now, you're only going to be able to do your base game uh, productions here. So your bread and your cakes, you're going to be able to do furniture. You're going to be able to do um, cereal. You've got your dairy products right here. You've got flour. I think everybody starts with flour, right? Your grape products, your oils. You're going to be able to do wood planks. You're going to be able to do your fabric, your sugar, your clothes, your eggs, and your honey, and then also wool. All right, all of those items you can put in here. This is it. I've got other mods loaded in right now that would give me other productions that I could make, and they don't show up. So I'm going to go over here to flower. This is like the one that everybody always starts with, right? And this is what this thing looks like. It's a really nice area. You've got a big unload point, and then it's got a spawn point right here next to it. And what happens is you drive over top of the bigger one, and it's going to give you the command to actually unload into this because it acts as a storage facility itself. It's 250,000 liters, which is roughly 250 pallets of normal product. All right. But what I'm going to do is I actually want to bring this over here. And you can see it says overlaps with other object. Well, it's because it's on top of this whole area right here is like a spawn point, And it doesn't like that. There's a pretty easy thing that you can do. If I turn on my help menu right here, all I have to do is hit my triangle and it's the toggle free mode on or off. I, I, I want to get rid of that. So now I can place this anywhere I want to. I'm going to give you a word of caution. Do not put this inside this area. If you have that smaller rectangle inside your um, collection point for your storage building, this is not going to work all right so what you need to do is actually put it just out here just a little bit all right just a little bit and i'll show you what this is going to do now we're in our truck right here and i'm going to go ahead and pull over top of the bigger rectangle like i said i was going to do you see i can now overload my flour into this storage so now as i walk around here to the other side you can see that all my pallets are, are going in here right so Everything is in this. It says total capacity, zero of 250. But that's actually this right here. If I want to go to this facility here, I can see that I've got 30,000 liters of product still inside this storage. I want to leave this on spawn. You can see right here, it's on spawn. I want to leave it right here. And the reason is because it's going to spawn here. Well, now all I have to do is take this product and just push it right across this line. And we're going to be good. It's, it's, it's going to go in here. Well, the problem is, how do I do this kind of automatically without another piece of equipment? Well, unfortunately, there's another mod for that. And that's going to be this one right here, the Pallet Pusher by No Name. This was originally released in April 5th of 2022, guys. Almost a year and a half ago, whenever we got this thing. I used it a lot then, but I'm definitely going to start using it a lot now once again. So what I'm going to do is get here out of the way. I'm going to go and go into construction and then I want to go over to decoration and now I want to go over to other. I know it seems very weird that this is where this is at, but here they are, the pallet pushers, all right? If I select this first one, you can see it's 2P X7M. That means that it's really wide and it's not very long at all, all right? So you can see that's what it looks like. If I go to a 1P right here, now this is probably going to be a lot more uh uh, likely realistic of what you're going to want. Okay. So what I want to do is line this up nice and centered right here. And I want it to push it past where my collection point is. Okay. So pretty much if I just put this right here, since I've got my toggle, I've toggled my work mode on and off, right? I'm going to be able to put this down and actually it doesn't matter with the toggle work mode. I can, I, it doesn't matter on this thing. It doesn't see it as a collision. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and put this right here. So it's just a little bit past and I'm going to go ahead and put this one down. And the reason I want the seven is because that is the shortest option that I have. I have a 12, a 16. Also, I want the seven and there's a very, very important reason for that. We'll go over that in here in just a second. So I'm going to go and place it down. It's $500. That's it guys. So now what's going to happen? If I come up here, you can see in my top left corner, it says move pusher. So I hit my circle. Watch what's going to happen. It's going to take my product now and it's going to push it into that point right there. And that's the problem that you have. Okay. You, you, you run into an instance where it spawns too fast and it pushes it back. Well, the good thing is if you have your auto load truck, pick it back up and run it back through here again. See this? 
check it. We're going to be able to move it again. And boom. Now, I know this isn't automatic. See, and like this one, it waited, right? It absolutely waited. So now it's going to spawn again. And then I'm just going to push it. Now, if you've got 500,000 liters of product, I understand this is going to take forever. It's only 4,000 at a time. But if you want to be able to use that trailer right there for other things, this is how you can store it, right? This is absolutely how you store it. We know that we have some buildings that are a thousand pieces. We have a 2000 piece building sitting right over there that I'm going to do another future video on guys, but this is how you're going to be able to do it. Now it may take a little bit of time. Like I said, to be able to get all of this product in there, but this is, this is, this is the only way that I've been able to find. If you've got another way, let me know down in the comments below, but if not, this, this is the way right here, just like the Mandalorian, this is the way. So once again, just to recap everybody, you're going to need the additional pallet storage. That's going to be this building right here. It's, it's a 250,000 liter storage. It's only going to work for your base game items. Then you're going to want the pallet pusher. That's this item that you see going back and forth right here. You're going to want to make sure that you toggle your work mode off so you can place down your storage first. And then this pallet pusher, you don't need to worry about it. It's going to be fine. Set it up so that it goes just over top of this. And if it pushes some product back, just grab your auto load, reload it back up, put it back in your storage and keep on going. Now, it's, like I said, it may take a while. It may absolutely take a while, but you're going to get your pallets stored in another place so you can still make more on the map. If you've got a lot of productions going on, might be a really awesome way to be able to, uh, to, 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 to let your gameplay keep going the way that you want it to instead of being restricted by the number of pallets that you have on the map. Are you using one of the new animal pens from Lancy Boy's American Husbandry set, but you're not really sure if you want to make the food or buy the food? Yeah, I've got something to help you out. How's it going, everybody? Driver53 here, and today we are going to compare if it's cheaper to make the food or to buy the food for your pigs and your cows. Yes, that includes pig food and TMR. So what I've got right here in front of me are the Feed Mixing Plants XXL. These mods were released, or this mod was released on the exact same day as Lancy Boy's American Husbandry set. So I figured, you know what, let's go ahead and do a comparison on these things, because it's really awesome. You get to put all your different uh, products into here, and it's going to give you pig food. It comes out right there. And over here on this one, you put in all your ingredients for your TMR, and it's going to come out right there. Now, I know there are some other ones available that have some different recipes, but I wanted to use this as a baseline, because in the name, this one says XXL. So I thought it was going to be pretty good to be able to jump in here and use one that maybe, hopefully, was going to have a very, very big capacity. We're going to go ahead and start with our TMR. And as you can see, the recipe right here, you got four different inputs that you need. Hay, silage, straw, and mineral feed. You're going to need a 1,500 liters of your hay and silage, 500 liters of straw, and only 50 liters of mineral feed. That's going to give you 3,550 liters of TMR. So you're not losing any product. You're not gaining any product. Now, I know there's other mods out there that have better recipes than this, some that you only need hay and silage, right? You don't need any straw or any mineral feed. We also know that in a mixer, you don't need either of those things either, but this one right here requires it. So I wanted to go ahead and just take a look and spotlight this brand new mod. If you look over on the right-hand side, you can see that we've only got 150,000 liters of storage for hay, silage, straw, and TMR. Now, why is this an issue? Well, the reason is because this mod said XXL, all right? So I'm thinking, hey, we got really big capacities here, and I think maybe they left a zero off at the end of each one of those values. The reason I say that is because your recipe is going to give you 3,550 liters of TMR. You're going to have 480 cycles per month. That's 1.7 million liters of TMR you're going to be able to make every single month. Now, if you've only can make 150,000 at a time, you're going to be emptying this thing almost every two hours. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at a spreadsheet that I put together to see if it's more cost effective to make the TMR in the mixer or to maybe buy TMR using something like the Big Bags Cattle Pack. So the first thing you can see right here is I've got all the different inputs that you're going to need, how much they are worth at their peak estimated sell price, how much you need in an input quantity per cycle, how much that value is per cycle, the output quantity of that cycle, and the output value of a thousand liters of that TMR. So what I mean by that is your hay, your silage, your straw, and your mineral feed all have a peak sell price or a peak value that you can get these from or sell them for. And when you add all the values together and you divide by the output quantity per cycle, and then you divide by a thousand liters, 
you're going to get roughly about $127. So if you've got a pallet of a thousand liters of TMR sitting right in front of you that you've made out of this uh, machine, it's going to be worth about $127. Now this is on hard economy also. So how much is that on normal economy? Well, if you look right here, you can see that it's going to be about $218. What about easy economy driver? Well, that's going to be about $353. Quite an interesting number right there. And what are we going to compare this to? Well, you can't buy TMR in base game. You've got to mix it some way or another. So you're going to be taking a look here at whichever mode of game you're playing on hard, easy, or normal. You know, that's, that's the value of that crop and all those inputs that you have per thousand liters. Now, like I mentioned before, we do have a big bag cattle pack that you can buy a 1200 liter pallet of TMR, but it costs you $2,240. So when you break that down, that's actually $1,867 per thousand liters. So no matter which way you make your food here, your TMR, it's going to be cheaper by like a quarter of the price, anywhere between 20 to 25% of that cost. Um, so it's going to be cheaper guys. It's definitely, definitely going to be cheaper. Now, whenever you figure in the construction cost, it's $50,000 for this machine right here. So how many liters are you going to need to make in that mixer to be able to be profitable instead of just going and buying everything? Like if you're playing the short game and you're not going to be on here very long, maybe you don't make it. Maybe you just figure out a way to buy it right with the big bag cattle pack. Well, on hard economy, it's going to take you about 102,000 liters of TMR that you need to make before you're going to be at a break-even point. All right. A normal mode, about 108,000 liters. And on easy mode, about 117,000 liters. So that's not a big spread right there. So if you're playing the short game, maybe just go buy you some bags of TMR. But if you're playing the long game and you anticipate that you're going to use more than 117,000 liters of TMR, it's going to cost you less money in the long run if you use the mixer. Now let's go ahead and take a look at pig food here for our little piggies. Here is the recipe. As you can see, you're gonna need potatoes, corn, wheat, and canola, 1500 liters of potatoes, 450 liters of corn and wheat, and then 250 liters of canola. Now, if you put the food in here yourself, corn is actually the one that you need more of. So this recipe is kind of odd to me that you only need 450 corn, but you need 1500 potatoes. For some reason, root crops in these recipes right here tend to be a little bit more, and I'm not sure exactly why. You know, the same thing is gonna happen here with all your storage capacity. Whenever you take 2,650 liters per cycle and you've got 624 cycles, that's 1,653,600 liters of product, but you only have 150,000 liters of storage, guys. Once again, you're going to be emptying this out roughly about every two hours. And here is the second spreadsheet that I put together. It goes the same way as the first one did. You've got your potatoes, your corn, your wheat, and your canola. Whenever you uh, divide this out per thousand liters on hard mode, it's going to be roughly $343 is what the pig food is going to have a value of because that's what you could have sold all of those inputs for. All right, on your normal mode here, it's $617. So we've jumped up in price quite a bit or jumped up in value quite a bit just between your hard and your normal prices. Now, what about easy? A lot of people play on easy. Well, that's gonna be $1,028. Now, fortunately for us, we can buy pig food in the store. So that's gonna be $900 for a thousand liter big bag. All right, your big bags are gonna be cheaper than your pallets are. So if you're going to go that way, you want to make sure you get the big bags. I don't know if you guys caught the value that I just said, but that's $900. But on easy mode, your value of all your crops is $1,028 per thousand liters, the exact same volume. So on this one right here, it absolutely does not make sense to make your own food if you're on easy mode instead of just buying it. If you're playing on easy, just go buy pig food. All right, you're going to save money if you're using this mixer right here. Now, if you're not on easy and you're playing on normal or hard and you still want to make your own pig food, at what point does it become profitable? What is your break-even point? Well, your construction cost, again, is $50,000. And on hard mode, you're going to need to make about 238,000 liters of pig food. And if you're on normal economy, it's 468,000 liters of pig food before 
it becomes a break-even point. Now, if you get a bunch of pigs, absolutely. But guys, almost a half million liters of pig food before you're going to break even using that machine right there, I think you just you just go buy it. Just go buy it from the shop. Now, I just want to say that I'm not trying to bash on this mod right here at all. The Feed Mixing Plants XXL by DS Power. I'm, they're awesome mods. I love the concept of this. Put your stuff in. You've got an auger right here. The name, though. The name is confusing to me, okay? If you could maybe update the volumes a little bit, then I think it would be a great mod. Now, yes, you're not going to be able to, you know, save a lot of money necessarily on pig food, but it's it's just the way that it is, right? The recipes sometimes don't work out, and it's more of an ease thing than it is trying to go over there and and load up a half a million liters of pig food. I mean, I, I wouldn't want to do that using... Uh, you know, that's 500 pallets, guys. I would not want to do that. So this right here is an ease for me. It's not a bad mod. I'm not trying to bash it at all. Are you tired of making pig food but never knowing exactly how much of each ingredient you need to put into the pen to satisfy their needs? Well, you could use the pig food production by Omatana. You only need four ingredients for each of the recipes. But what if I told you there was another mod that you only needed one ingredient to make pig food? That's right, with a modernized flour mill from Adub Modding and the ABP team, you're only gonna need to put one ingredient in here. Once you get the mod downloaded and your game started, you're gonna come here into construction, then you're gonna go here to production, all right? And then you're gonna go down to factories, and you're gonna go across until you see the modernized flour mill right here. Now it does cost $100,000, and you are able to spin it around anywhere you like. What you need to pay attention to is right here on the front, you've got your dump off point and your pickup point right here. $100,000 to put down if you don't need to do any terraforming at all. And it's pretty simple, the two points, once again, the drop-off point right here where all of your ingredients go, and then your pickup right here. Now let's go ahead and take a look here at the recipes. And as you can see right off the bat, you are gonna be able to make a ton of different types of flour. But the really interesting thing is, if you look at the very last thing that's gonna be a byproduct, is you're gonna get pig food. Yes, so here with wheat flour, right? You're gonna be able to put wheat in, you're gonna get flour, you're gonna get chaff, for some reason, you're going to get stones and you're going to get pig food as well. And all of these have different recipes all the way down. The one that I found that appears to be the best is going to be your corn flour right here. It only takes 24 corn and you're going to get 60 pig food out of each cycle. But you might be wondering, well, exactly how much are you going to get every single month out of this thing? Well, a regular cornfield, all right, if you don't do anything to it at all, it's full of weeds, and you don't put any lime, you don't put any fertilizer, anything like that. Per hectare, you're going to get 9,200 liters of corn off of that hectare of ground. Whenever you run it through here, you're going to be able to get a total of 23,000 pig food off every single hectare if you don't do anything to the field at all. If you got it at a full 100% yield, you're going to get 46,000 liters of pig food. And you're also going to get 46,000 liters of everything else as well, guys. You're going to get flour. You're going to get your chaff. You're going to get your stones and the pig food. Guys, that's 132,000 liters of product out of only 18,400 liters of corn. That's insane. And some of you might be saying, but driver, I need six liters of diesel for every single one of those cycles. Yeah, you do on this recipe, but if you come down here and you take a look a little bit farther down, you can use electric charge also, or you can use methane. For those of you that are running BGAs, I think some of you already have these things that you just kind of sell off, right, for a profit. Well, now you can use them to help make your pig food and these other things as well. But what if you're not running a BGA and you have to figure out how you're going to come up with diesel, methane, or electric charge? Well, this right here. You've got the fuel refinery by Zottelzoct. And guys, there's a way that you can actually get free electrical charge with this. And to put it on your map, you're going to come here into construction. It's going to be right next to your other factory that you just put down. And it's going to look like this right here. Now, it's going to cost you $125,000. It is a little bit more expensive. But guys, this thing is, I think it's going to pay for itself pretty quickly. And, and you're going to be able to get a lot of different things out of this, depending on what all you do on your farm. And let me show you what I mean. We're going to come right here into our recipes. We click here. And the first thing that you can see is electric charge by air. Yes, 
it costs you absolutely nothing to get 25 electric charge 600 times a month. That's going to be a total of 15,000 uh, units of electrical charge that you can get every single month absolutely free. So the way it works, you see those uh, turbines up there on the top. If I come back in here and I turn this recipe on, well, now they're spinning and I'm getting electrical charge. All right. And all I have to do whenever I come back in here is go over to my electrical charge down here on the bottom. And instead of spawning, what I want to do is I want to distribute. Now that's going to send it over to my other factory. Now there is going to be a little bit of a cost associated with this, but it's, it's just, it's going to automatically go over there, right? At the top of every hour, it's just going to shoot itself over there. You've, it's like you've got an invisible wire. Other ways that you can get your electrical charge is you could use methane to get it or diesel. You might be wondering, well, how in the world do I get some diesel? Well, there's recipes right here where you can get methane and diesel and more pig food, guys. Canola, sunflowers, soybeans, olives, sugar cane, cut sugar beet, potatoes. You're all going to be able to get pig food as a byproduct here to make some diesel and methane to be able to power the other plant to use some of your other grains. So let's say you've got, I don't know, a, a bunch of canola or something. You did a contract, right? We'll bring it over here, throw it into this. You're going to be able to make you a ton of diesel and you're going to be able to get you some pig food out of this thing. And you're going to be able to get some compost. Now, this isn't the most uh, beneficial, right? You're losing quite a bit here, right? You're only getting 700 units of stuff out of a thousand liters of your uh, crop. So I would probably stay away from this if you're trying to make pig food. What I would do though, is come down here and take a look at wood chips. For every thousand liters of wood chips, you're going to be able to get 25 liters of diesel, five units of of methane and then 800 liters of compost. You're gonna be able to sell that compost off straight, right? Or if you've got a BGA that accepts it, you can turn that back into maybe more electric, things like that. But that's awesome. Cut down a bunch of trees, make you a bunch of diesel and methane, and then use that in your other facility over here to be able to actually power this factory, right? You, you've got a diesel recipe right here. You've got an electrical charge recipe right here. And you've got a methane recipe right here. So by using these two mods in conjunction with each other, I mean, you could absolutely run just the, the wind right here. Like I said, now to run a full uh, recipe over here in the grain mill on any of those recipes, it takes six units um, and it's 3,600 per month. So that's going to be 21,600 total that you're going to need. And one of these is only going to make you 15,000. So it's only going to run about three quarters of a month. And then it's going to start back over right at the beginning of the next month. So if you're trying to make this for the entire year, just kind of plan that out, right? Or like I said, get some wood chips or get some other grains or something from another contract, throw in here, run one of those other recipes where you get some diesel and then run that diesel recipe over there as well. I mean, guys, I know that this right here is going to cost you $225,000 to actually put down on your farm, but I, I believe that you are going to be able to make some money back really quick on this, especially if you take that chaff and you turn it into some silage or you, you take it over to your BGA, your stones, be able to make that into lime that you could sell, or you could make it into lime that you could just use on your plant, save some money there, or your farm, save some money there. And I mean, your diesel, just, just sell the diesel, right? Sell it outright or, or, you know, the flour, you're, you're going to be making all that flour. And for those of you that really want to make money super fast, I just mentioned flour, right? We'll check out this recipe right here. Um, you want some bread? Okay. Two liters of flour is going to make 30 units of bread or, or you, you come down here in cakes, right? That's, it's usually the whole recipe, right? You need two flour, two sugar, two milk, two eggs, two butter, and two strawberries. That's going to make you a cake. Not anymore. Right here. Two flour makes 30 cakes. Yep. I, I don't know how. I don't know why. So take your diesel and your flour that you're getting made in these two buildings right here. Make 30 cakes with it, and you are going to make so much money while you're making pig food.